Hi guys, Thank you, Link here with Joe speaking, and uh, I'm back. It's uh, been a while, hasn't it? Frankly, I uh, honestly don't really have an excuse. I just did not feel like making videos at all, uh, which is kind of sad, but whatever. I'm back. A new video, new card showcase. I got a lot of cards, and I'm almost done, you guys. I've got like six more cards left. Then I just got to do a massive over, like a, a huge just rebalancing of the game to make some of the, some cards, you know, more useful while other cards less useful. Um, and then play a few more uh, test matches and then uh, I'm going to release it on tabletop. So yeah, uh, you guys can look forward to that. Um, I'm just going to jump right in these card showcases usually take about 20 minutes so however much time i can scratch off the better so we ended off with gordian last time uh next card is music bloom or i guess the first card for today um music bloom is a bloom card it's a support card obviously um it's got it's actually pretty useful it's pr pretty handy the fact that it can attack there have been a couple of times where I've gotten a, a, a game win because of Music Bloom and because it can attack with that small amount of damage. But that's besides the point. Uh, once per turn, while on the back line, you can pay two energy to let another plant attack twice. So it is very expensive, but I mean, you're letting a plant attack twice. So if it's something like, uh, you know, something powerful, you know, Cap Golem, Silver Cap Golem. Uh, who else? You know, maybe a leaf wing, uh, maybe not a leaf wing. Uh, just, just something powerful. Giving it a second attack can really just clear the field or clear a lane, I should say. Moving on, we've got Tater Lord. See, this is a good. This was what I was looking for, but uh, when I was talking about Music Bloom, but he, this is a great card to use Music Bloom with because he's got a hundred attack power. Um, Tater Lord, he's got no ability. He's a four cost veggie. Um, he's got the max attack value, he's got virtually no defense, and he's got a pretty beefy health stat. It's not terribly high for a level 4, but I mean it's still 100 plus. And Tater Lord actually has a silver boost. Um, so all of his stats get doubled, so he gets a monstrous 200 attack and 230 health. He's just, Silver Tater Lord's just a monster. And he, he's got awful defense though. But, when played, it gains 5 defense for every veggie plant on the field, except for him. So you're getting a bunch, if you have a bunch of veggies on the field, or if your opponent even has one or two, you know, you can increase the value of this card so much more. Because, you know, you'll make him virtually unstoppable. You know, if you get if you get enough defense on him, nothing can kill him, and he'll just kill everything. So, yeah, a very v the strongest card attack wise in the game. I'm pretty sure. I don't think anything comes close to 200. Next up, we have Tofu Slime. Tofu Slime is a very useful utility card. Uh, if a plant on your side of the field is killed, you can instantly play this plant to that zone for free. So, you know, you play a weak level 1 or, you know, even one of your stronger level 4s, if it gets taken out and you have this in your hand, you just get to play it there. And, you know, most of the time it'll just die next turn, but, you know, if you get the chance to evolve it, um, or, you know, if you play it in front of something that just doesn't have more than 20 attack, then it can actually stall. So it's, it's really just used when you're when you're you know getting hammered and then you get to play a free plant and just have it blocked to give you an extra turn to draw some cards and to just figure out what you're gonna do he's also fucking adorable and I fucking love him next up we have dark mold um evolution as a mechanic has gone through a lot of changes <laughs> So right now, 
Having a training session, so I think I'm going to find a lot of ways having plenty of all. We're going to have a training session. And really, 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 when your opponent evolves a plant, lower the attack and defense of that plant by 25. 25, and it's a one cost too, it's a one cost trap. So 25 is such a monstrous number in this game. It, it can really make the difference. The, 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 the problem with Dark Mold is just finding a, an opportunity to use it. Next up we have Cry Chi, which is adorable. It's a, like a Light Chi, which is you know, kind of, I think it's a rarer berry, like, you know, people say lychee and it's like, well, what's that? But, you know, I watched Penguins of Madagascar when I was growing up on Nickelodeon, um, and there was this one episode where it's like, they eat the lychee berries and they go crazy, but that's always sticked with me. Anyways, getting, get off topic so fast, getting back to the point uh Krychi is a very it's actually like probably the best level two in the game because it's got 30 attack which is respectable like it's not that bad it's got 15 defense again respectable and then it's got 50 health this thing is a monster it just, it just stalls and it does just doesn't die it just does not die unless you got like a level four attacking it and to make things worse it's got a silver boost. Silver Krychi. Um, when played, all plants in the enemy front line lose 20 defense. When killed, heal a plant on your side of the field by 25 health. This is a very uh, specific card. Um, it's got very good stats. So if you want to play it for mostly just its stats, you can do that. But, you know, obviously you're going to get the most value out of it if you play it when your opponent has a loaded front line. And then even when it dies, you get the added bonus of healing one of your plants. Which, from what I've found, healing in general in this game isn't as important. Very good stat card. Um, and then if you get the chance to use its abilities, obviously its value is going to skyrocket. Next up we have Spud Mole. Um, I love his design. He's a very, I would say, below average card though. Next up, we have Hive Mind. Again, a favorite design of mine. I love him. Uh, well, mostly the top half. Once you get to like the tentacles, I don't really know what to do for the bottom half, so I kind of just wing it. Um, while this is on the front line, when any plants on your side of the field are damaged, this plant takes that damage instead. If this plant is played by evolution, this plant gets 25 attack. So, first of all, his stats. Uh, he's got, he's level 4, attack, his attack is awful. You really want to evolve him because then he'll have 55 attack, which is okay. It's not, even that's not that great, but it's significantly better. 60 defense is really good. And then the 120 health is also really good. This is a very defensive oriented card. So how his ability works, say you have an apple core, and then a hive mind on the field, right? You have those two cards. And the apple core gets attacked for 30 damage. The apple core has zero defense. So, you know, the apple core would take that 30 damage. Instead of the apple core taking that damage, the hive mind takes that damage. So it would go to 90. Now say, instead of an apple core, it was, let's see, uh, fruit dactyl, I guess. Um, that So again, a 30 attack done to fruit dactyl. Frudactyl has 15 defense, so you minus the 15, right? So then it's only 15 damage being done to the Frudactyl, which then gets sent to the Hive Mind. Uh, the damage doesn't get sent, like, it, it goes directly to the health of the Hive Mind. You don't, you don't go, you don't lower the, the attack based off the defense value of the first creature and then of Hive Mind. You only do that when Hive Mind is attacked directly. So if something was attacking Hive Mind, then you would use its 60 defense. But otherwise, it would just take that damage directly. Next up, we have Necros. When played, take a card from your compost pile, which is the graveyard, uh, show it to your opponent, and add it to your hand. This card costs the same as the target, lowered by 1. If the target has no cost, then this costs 5. So, 
It's essentially Monster Reborn from Yu-Gi-Oh! Although I think Monster Reborn only lets you take out a monster. Monster Reborn, duh, that makes sense. Um, this lets you pick any card. It's got its uses. Scorpithorn. Scorpithorn was originally a two cost, but um, I just, I wanted to make another three cost for the weeds, so I just decided to buff up Scorpithorn. Like, I, I, took, I just looked at all the weeds that were already created and I was like, oh, Scorpithorn looks like the only one that can, you know, make sense to be buffed. So he's just a stat card. He's got really good attack. He's got really good attack. Uh, okay defense. Uh, pretty good defense and uh, pretty bad health. He'll die pretty quickly, but he'll get a shot or two off, you know. Moving on, we have Broccoli Squid. Um, again, just a stat card, a very, very... It's more health-oriented, you know, from compared to the uh, Turn Rip, which is the other one cost for the uh, veggies. But uh, yeah, it's just an another one cost option. Use it to evolve a plant or, uh, just, you know, block a lane try to get a point. Next up is Bloodstinger. Um, he, it's got pretty okay attack. Actually, right? No, it's got really good attack. No, it doesn't. Hold on. It's got really good attack. <laughs> it's got really good attack. It's got really good attack. Okay defense. And then, uh, kind of bad health, but every time uh, this plant kills an enemy plant, you gain an energy. So, if you really want to play around with energy, like getting a lot of energy, you know, to play like high cost cards, you definitely want to use flowers. Because, you know, you got cards like Dilofa Bloom, which you gain energy every time you draw a card. You have cards like Rebus, which you equip it to a plant, and every time that plant attacks, you gain energy. So Rebus is a little more useful because it's any time that plant attacks. So that includes getting points. Bloodstinger only gets you the energy when it kills something. But I mean, Bloodstinger is going to be, depending on, you know, like what you put Rebus on, Bloodstinger might have a better chance of surviving. And Rebus can get removed instantly by, you know, Raz Spider. So. Next up, we have Bronze Band. Um, so... I'm sure some of you have noticed, and I'm sure I've said something, but every silver boost, every silver boost card has a little silver ring, like a silver band on it. Um, I won't tell where everyone is, but uh, you can, you know, find them yourselves. They're pretty easy to spot, you know, that's kind of the whole point. Um, uh, so, so the idea behind bronze band is that, um... It's like a weakened version, so you're only doubling the attack or the defense of the plant. And if you if you use Bronze Band on, say, a Melon Brute, then that Melon Brute can't Silver Boost. So it's kind of a choice. Um, and it costs the same as the target plant. That's it. It just costs the same as the target plant. Alright, so this will be the last card for this video. We have Summer End which is a three cost, uh, it's, it's, so all the ends, except for this one, are four costs, so they're like end game, and they all require another end to be on the field to use their abilities. So summer end is a cheaper end that lets you get off those combos, right? So you're, you're able to play this a little sooner than, say, a, uh, Jester Grim end, or even a Dandy Swarm end. But because of that, it's a lot weaker. It's only got 45 attack and defense and 90 health. Whereas, you know, Jester Grim has 100 attack and 125 health. And then Dandy Swarm is, has 70 attack and 25 defense, 65 health. Dandy Swarm's not that. Dandy Swarm's a bit weaker, but I mean, that's kind of the point. You know, he, he's supposed, no, another end's supposed to die. And then you get to play everything. Um, but Summer End is just, it's just a, uh, supportive, or, or, utility, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's part of the Antarctic type, and 
you know, I didn't really know what to do for Summer End. Like, I just kind of went with it, and I kind of thought, well, what if it's like a tray of a bunch of fruit? So I did that, and then I was like, well, what can I do for the rest of it? <laughs> and so I was like, oh, what if it's like got hedge bushes or something like that? Because I wanted to do like a square type design. And then I was like, well, what if the head bushes are the hands? And I was like, Phew. and then I made this. So yeah, those are what? How many do we got? So yeah, those are 15 new cards. As you can see, there's, you know, another 15 or so left, um, which I do plan to make another video and release that pretty quick. Um, and then I've only got like six cards left and then I'm done. Um, after I finish this, after I finish with all of this, I do plan to take a break from making set two, which I do plan to make. I do have some card ideas planned for set two. I, I, some, I have it pretty much all planned out. But uh, set two, I'll probably start making that a month or two after I finish, finish this. Um, yeah, so I just gotta finish the last couple of cards, make sure it's all, you know, relatively balanced, and then make a rule book. And then, you know, I, I, you guys get to play it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.